The Radio Shopping Show is sponsored by WRMN and the businesses where the certificates mentioned on this program may be redeemed. Welcome to the Radio Shopping Show, the most amazing show on the radio. The Radio Shopping Show is a fun and unique way to save 40, 50, 60 percent or even more on travel destinations, family or fine dining, entertainment, auto services, plus thousands of other items. To participate on the Radio Shopping Show, simply call area code 847-931-1410. 931-1410. Questions about various merchandise and how to shop with us are welcome as well. Or go to our website, www.wrmn1410.com. Now, let's save money with the Radio Shopping Show. And welcome back, everybody, to WRMN. We've got Joey joining us in the studio today. Joey Zeller coming to us from The Distance Social. And The Distance Social has a feature every other week here at WRMN on a Thursday night. You'll have me coming in. He has to bribe me with alcohol. Uh, no, um, I come in on every other week Thursday just because um, I, enjoy, I enjoy talking with you. And I think sometimes uh, you get to learn. Um, and I think I'm hopefully when somebody is uh, excellent at what they do, obviously, like any kind of mixologist, it's good to come at it with a little bit of knowledge, but not too much. So I enjoy asking questions. Yeah. And you and I were talking during the break. Some honestly, some of the best conversations, folks, if you ever have a chance to come and sit in and just kind of like shadow a radio performance, some of the best conversations actually happen off the air, yeah, which between. is kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we were talking about the different types of alcohol and I was searching out um, a, uh, a rum that uh, just brought up a storyline. And so I was looking at a rum and you were saying that uh, we went from looking at that and the, the alcohol content to finding things that are smoother. And you used a great way of describing it. You said you don't get kind of like that alcohol burn. Yeah, ethanol. Yeah. yeah it's, and that is what it is and it's you, you find it more present in certain things and less in another and sometimes it's nice with the flavor profile and sometimes it's just hot liquor yeah like i don't need to be smacked in the face you yeah. know when i take a sip of a drink but i can always tell if i take a sip of something if you're watching anybody and they're doing one of these yeah and you can feel that burn coming down yeah, not, not something i'm going to enjoy again but i've also had a drink of something and i sat back and you probably even witnessed it and gone Ooh, that's smooth. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. There is a certain amount of tolerance building when, especially if you're just like getting into like tasting spirits neat and getting into higher proofs and stuff like that, you do have to like acclimate your palate, your right. mouth really to, to all of the ethanol. And that's the one thing I too, anytime you have a time or an opportunity to enjoy like a dinner pairing or a bourbon pairing or a whiskey pairing when it comes to food, I always try to check those out because I like, there's something that has to be in the mind and artistry that goes in the mind that pairs up ingredients that might come from the... Yeah, pairings are fun. Yeah, right? Yeah. They're going to they're gonna be doing a wine one on the 14th at Elgin Public House. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, Chef Greg is going to be leaving, nice. so he's doing one of those and he's got a six course meal, but he'll do that and take the ingredient just like what you said, take the ingredient and build something around it. Yeah. You were also mentioning then that you have taken the 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 source, the alcohol that you're going to put in it, the the drink part of that you're going to put in, not the alcohol. Is that what I say? Alcohol, the booze that yeah. you're going to put in. So you would take that part and then you would bring ingredients that play yeah, nicely sort of with it. Build around it, and maybe it's just a you know a unique spirit in and of itself, or a liqueur or something like that, or just like that particular expression of mm -hmm. the spirit. It has whatever unique flavor that we, you know, taste in it, we, you know, like, well, let's try this and let's try this mm -hmm. and make a cocktail out of it. And another thing is anytime that uh, Joey has been presenting, and if you guys have been following along, I've got, and we've got the picture here. So I'm going to share this. This is a daiquiri. Now he's got a chilled glass that he started with right away. So if you guys can see this, um, this is uh, started with a chilled glass. This has got the rum in it. So it's got three, two ounces of rum. Then it's got three quarters of an ounce squeezed lime. So you can do three quarters to, I guess, depending on what you want, up to an, uh, an ounce to. Yeah, you said three quarters like is a little bit pretty more. standard, but it, it, 
I like a limey one, so got I'll it. put an ounce in mine usually. So you've got that. Then you're also going to match that up with three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. And then you're going to shake it in a shaker tin and then um, pour it over. So you're going to strain it if you don't like to have... You, you brought up kind of sometimes people enjoy those little ice chips. Yeah, this is one of the drinks that if you like, I don't know, if you like ice chips in your drink, this is a good one for mm-hmm. it. But I, I use the double strainer. I always prefer the double strainer. Oh, yeah, this one I could do quite often. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> There's, uh, you had mentioned, too, when we were talking about that bite or that kick that the ethanol kind of gets when you're taking a sip of it. Every time I've tried something that I can taste the alcohol, and there's a lot of people, we brought this up maybe one of the very first weeks that you and I met. I said that some people say, I don't like a drink to taste like alcohol. I don't want to taste it. I want, you know, it can maybe have that flavor in the background and just kind of hiding around the corner, but I don't like something that's going to, you know, kick me in the face is the the term I used. Um, So when you do this, what is it that makes it kind of calm down a little bit? Is it based on the alcohol that of your choices and then doing the sugar, simple syrup in it to tame it a little bit or the lime to keep that tartness in it? Yeah. So this one in particular um, is probably just the rum choice. So you might be able to do it the same way every single time and try different rums and some of them are might just bite a little more right um that's kind of just how it is but that that, that's part of what's fun about this cocktail is just just play around with it and this is something too that everybody can keep in your house you've got some rum in your house uh and again chilling the glasses i will say is probably one of the best the smarter things yeah the one thing i always notice is you've always had a great garnish and when you are baking or cooking quite often you will put a garnish on the product i don't know if you knew this but if you're baking and there are maybe nuts in it, you'll sprinkle nuts on the top. Yeah. Or if uh, you're going to make, usually if you're ever seeing a, a lemon meringue pie, you'll see a little lemon slice on top. Right. So people know the ingredient that's in it. Yeah. You always seem to do that um, to enhance maybe some of the ingredients that were made in the drinks. You always start to use those as the garnish. Does that stay true all the way around? Um, so frequently we do that. I wouldn't say that's like the... Because I don't the, know what you would do that blue cheese olive with. Yeah, I mean... I know what it would taste good with, but as a garnish, no. Yeah, that's pretty much for one drink only, the blue cheese olive. I don't know, some of them we just, like, have have fun with. Mm -hmm. And, like, we had one on our winter menu that had, like, a cotton candy fluff kind of stuck on it. Ooh, that Um, would be a fun one, though. You know, for some whimsy, I suppose. So, and the one thing you don't do also is you don't serve it with a stir stick or a straw. No, I have them if you want them, but no. no, even like the stuff we serve on the rocks in the glass, we don't typically, there are a couple of drinks with crushed ice and stuff that get straws, but by but the, and large, they don't. And that's just yeah. a matter of getting through the straw to have the drink. Because to me, if it's something that I'm going to have in a larger form, um, then fine, I'll take this and I'll use the straw for a stir trick. I just don't drink out of straws, yeah. period. Um, but I'll use it as a stir because sometimes it can settle. That was what was so cool about the New York Sour is because you had that wine rounding the top of it and it just did not settle. Eventually, I'm sure it would. Yeah, it mixes in a little once it start, once the ice starts to melt, really. Right, and if you did stir it, you probably would have more mixing to it, but I like the visual of what it was that we had in the glass. Yeah, it's there, a which beautiful looking drink. And I, I get people who just want it stirred in. They want to taste that amount of wine in the whole drink. But, yeah. You know, that's the trade-off. You get sort of perfect balance of the flavor or the visual. Yeah. Of, of, I take the it. visual yeah. because I think, and you mentioned this one other time to me that you said there'll be people that are at the bar and they'll say, I want one of those. Yeah. Uh, whether they've watched you make it to fruition and uh, deliver it to the patron or if it's just because they see it when it's already done and they like the look of it. Yeah, and that's a, that one's an eye catcher. Or we were talking about, uh, uh, we have a rum that's 160 proof and the, it's just our our fuel for fire yeah but we'll do tiki drinks literally so when you want to light something for an attention on fire if you want to have it do you have any drinks that actually you do that on top that you light it up um we don't have any on our menu right now but we have in the past and if you asked for some if you came in and asked for something on fire you would receive something on fire the only thing that i can remember was (laughs) on uh fire was when somebody's doing a oompa and you've got the cheese that they let out at a greek restaurant oh yeah you know (laughs) when they put it up they put that on there and then they flame it up are you kidding me that's delicious and then they've got that flat bread that you can kind of eat with it is uh we're giving a hats off to village square right there uh right now because it's delicious we always just like soak a sugar cube and sometimes we'll make a little lime boat to like hold the the contraption but we can do a similar like 
thing. I don't uh-huh. know, you yeah. know, like the the flambe or whatever when they when they, when they good. throw the, mm-hmm. the alcohol on it but with powdered cinnamon. So you have the flame and you just sprinkle cinnamon on top. Really? Of it. it does like fireworks. Yeah. It's really so cool. probably what percentage of you what you do is a um a, an a, an art form. Do you know what I mean? Meaning like it's it's a matter it's a display. You are a performer behind the bar. You just have your skills are making drinks, but part of it is um the theatrics of it. Yeah, I mean it it's creative sort of in its in its in its own right for well, sure like i said whether it's what you're how you describe it you know the origin of it or how it came to be or describing people um uh what it's not just necessarily made of but just like you and i we'll start talking and breaking down maybe where this came from where the drink started from like the gordon's cup we had yeah you know uh, how long ago when did that come from so the history of the daiquiri is no different yeah i mean it is performative too like, like you said everyone watches you we call it cocktail TV, mm-hmm. but it's, you know, it's a stage from the waist up. Right. That's, and <laughs> you know what? And if you can, and you want to enjoy it, especially if you're a big fan of just kind of kicking back and sipping a beverage, talking, communicating with some friends, hanging out after work one night, or just getting out of the house. Now we're having some of those, the days are lighter, yeah. which I'm loving. The days are lighter, longer, um, and the distance social is going to be bringing us the whiskey and cigar social coming up two weeks from tonight. So remember, we won't be in studio. We're going to be out in the crowd two weeks from tonight. We're going to be at the depot in downtown Dundee. Uh, if you are experiencing the distance social, one other thing that is great is that you can order food from any surrounding vendors. Now, I thought I had asked you, and if not, I'm going to repeat it. Um, Do you have menu items of maybe some of the local establishments around you that if people are doing that? Because I figure for people who don't know, they might hear about it when they come in by you and say, because, you know, if you're having a drink, you're like, man, I I really don't want to go out to eat. I wish we could just kick back and sit here. So we used to. I'm not sure we do anymore. Um, But I would recommend just looking on online. Yeah, no, you can do it anywhere. Yeah, because I think we had menus for a couple places. And then, like, uh, by the time... uh, but they were out of date at a certain point. Right. Yeah, that's the one they thing, unfortunately. Rotated that comes with, menus and stuff like that. They're time sensitive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you guys are located not far from the depot. Your physical address is what? 314 North River Street. So, and we're going to be at 319 yep. River Street. So you're just, you don't have a long way to travel right for this the gig. Street. Uh-huh. Yeah. How many vendors do you expect to be there? Um, I think 14. So I'll have 14 distilleries and distributors. And I don't remember how that shakes down, like 10 or something distilleries and four or five-ish distributors. So the, what that means for in lingo for people who might not know, distillery is where the uh, the the alcohol is made or distilled, correct. and the distributors are the people who sell to you and are going to be bringing some of their product yes, in the, for people to sample. Yeah, the middle the middlemen who the middle buy man, it from the go. distillers and sell it to bar owners and. Uh, liquor store owners. Got much. it. And so they will have some spirits available. Now that night when you check in, if you're going to go and you want to attend, I would say plan a little bit ahead. Uh, you'll save some money. If you go right to the distance social, you can pick up your tickets, $65 right from the distance social. Your hours again? Uh, Mon- or excuse me, Wednesday, Thursday, we're 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. Friday, 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. Saturday, we're open at 2 p.m. and we close again at 1 a.m. And then Sunday is our short day. It's 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. And so you can stop by during any of those hours to get your tickets in person. Now, with your ticket, you're actually going to be getting a cigar. Yes, correct. And what type of cigar was it? You had mentioned that this sounds like it's the the general name that people yeah, affiliate so with the starter it's, cigar. It's a Macanudo Inspirado Orange label for any of you cigar people out there. Would you consider that a starter cigar or what makes this one is the one that was chosen? Um, yeah, so that's kind of why I picked it. Something, uh, I, I think it's like a medium or medium heavy body. So it's something that will sort of hold up to the spirits that you'll be sampling, but it's not going to blow out your palate Mm -hmm. and it's not going to get washed away by the flavor of the spirits and stuff like that. Why do you think cigars and whiskey go together? Why do you think that pairing is it because there's a smokiness, uh, too, that's got a similar background or what's the common denominator there that makes that go together? Do you think? I don't know off the top of my head. I seem to remember. So we did, My parents, my wife, and myself, before we opened, were in uh, Louisville, and we did a bourbon steward, an executive bourbon steward class to just learn sort of like the ins and outs of whiskeys and like how to sell basically See, i would absorb that i would it have said okay tell cool. me more you know i would have said but I, edge of my seat. I seem to remember that some of the like flavor compounds that are present in 
I think it's the barrel actually are also present in tobacco. Oh. So there is certain crossover just in sort of chemistry. Like I said, is there's there's a common denominator yeah. in both of them that yeah. comes to play and that makes it fit. Yeah, maybe don't quote me on that, but like I, there's somewhere in there it's ringing a bell that the logic would tell me though there. because if you have a cigar yeah. is different than having like a cigarette. A cigar there's uh, uh, the way that it's rolled in the uh, uh, the smokiness that sounds like a weird term to describe it, but I know that in distilling uh, the the barrels, yeah, there is a smokiness to that that goes hand in hand with it. So yeah. that's what to me makes exactly. it seem like it would be a, a yeah. I mean, there's sort of fire first cousin, if you would, yeah. And and whether or not they're the exact same. Uh, like sort of chemicals between the two that it's the same flavor you're getting out of it right like we'll sort of describe tobacco notes or leather notes both like when we're tasting barreled spirits or tasting tobacco right yeah. now we have got right now today's drink is the daiquiri you've got a beautiful etched glass here i couldn't see that when the, I love the, these glasses. the yeah. yeah when you know what i like them because they are especially ladies um uh and guys the same but it's nice if you just want to have a nice little light refreshing it's it does cleanse your palate quite a bit so we were talking about things that you would enjoy with it with that rum base um seafood we looked it up seafood yeah, and i grilled said grilled seafood, seafood would probably yeah. be something that would be really good at it yeah some grilled like mahi tacos or something and a oh, daiquiri yeah that's my go-to lately have you ever yeah there's yeah. a uh They're yeah so easy and so good um, we found a place up in wisconsin in appleton and they had those tacos and they were almost they wasn't a blackened but they had a lot of they had a kick to it I used to the do spicy one with like a, it. like it was like a spicy. I forgot how I made it. It had like a spicy glaze on it. Uh-huh. And then I made tacos with like, um, it was like sriracha coleslaw that I made. It yeah. Oh good. yeah. They you guys. Good. You guys. <laughs> good. <laughs> that one. Um, here it says, and this is the range I just was looking at it. So I was asking, why do cigars and whiskey go together? Yeah. Okay. God bless Google. We got to say that all the time. Um, it says they're classified by body and range. They share common flavors of leather. This is interesting. Leather, nuts, rye, and spices. Yeah, I can see that. Right. And there's certain, like, uh, I mean, you could even, they they come from sort of the same regions, and I think it kind of said that in there, but, like, tobaccos and dark rum go together very well, and uh, tobacco and bourbon. But when you think about sort of where these, where these project, excuse me, products originate, um, Right, you have tobacco kind of growing in the south of the United States of America, and that's kind of where bourbon, you know, originated. originated. Right, because bourbon has to be from Kentucky, right, or just the U.S. U.S. Yeah, yeah. So I remember that where it where it sort of caught us as a nation. Yeah, and the other thing they have on there, they go together well together, and just for the obvious, is because they're meant to be enjoyed slowly and savored slowly. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah. and that's the part that you can enjoy by coming out to the Whiskey and Cigar Social. It's going to be two weeks from tonight, so mark your calendars. Get your tickets if you have not already gotten those because there is limited space, so uh, don't be one of those that's going to wait till the last minute and be like the kid in the candy store looking out and couldn't come in because (laughs) uh, you didn't get your tickets ahead of time. Plus, it's a great way for you to save money if you want to get them ahead of time. It's going to be $80 at the door. I say door. We should say gate. Gate. Yeah. <clears throat> $80 at the gate. Otherwise, you can pick them up earlier for just 65 at the distance social. And again, we went through the hours before. One other thing I did want to mention, and we're going to get to this. We have to take a quick commercial break. Uh, best darn daiquiri I've had, seriously. Uh, there's some talent behind making something. And you said a great line when we were, I don't know if it was on the air or not, but you said a great line saying, if you ever wanted to test the skill of a bartender yeah. have them make you a daiquiri because you'll tell how much uh experience they have behind that knowing the right um levels and ingredients to put in it yes how much. exactly or just like how 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 good it is so, mm-hmm. so a lot of people have sort of their own spins on it but like you know is it a good daiquiri yeah and there's some things that you made between this and the gordon's cup that had a little bit of more of a refreshing yeah. you know like uh it's not a lighter t- well maybe it is lighter but there's a f- refreshing to your palate like cleansing it which is why we've been talking a lot about the spicy seafood and things that you might want to share with it and then other things have a little bit more of a warming you know uh, a warming to them when you drink them you yeah, know uh, and i think too when we were doing some of the whiskey or i think we did we do one drink? Was it with the bourbon? I know we did whiskey and I know we did gin. So we did the the going out west, but that was with, that was a Gary, Gary though. Gary. Yeah. Yeah. So then it must have been the the whiskey early on when we Manhattan, had the old yeah that that's old the fashion. one where you had the warming through it. Uh, it's, so it's a different experience, drinking experience, depending on what the ingredient or the liquor is. Yeah, for sure, and that's why certain drinks are better, like in certain weather. 
And I also, oh, by far, this I could see on a hot day, dangerously good on a hot day, but this I could see just being refreshing. But I probably would enjoy it even more if I had some uh, great seafood to go with it. I could see that. Or next on a beach or next to a pool, something like that. That's one of those when you're at Posada Riel, which, by the way, we have on special today. If anybody can get down to Posada Riel before the end of July, I've got a $650 all-inclusive. That means you've got your lodging, you've got your food, which again, Daiquiri would go divine with. You've got your food, you've got your um, drinks, even alcohol. All your drinks are included with this ticket. It's a 650 value. It's for two people. You get your plane. That's all you have to do is get your plane. I'm going to offer you the 650 value. Again, it is a quick think. I've meant to get out of Judge. I need to get away. I need to do refresh. I need to kind of like restart and kick back and enjoy life a little bit more. Reevaluate your priorities. Head on down to Posada Real in Los Cabos. Nice. Right now, it's $100. That's a six hundred and fifty dollar value. Good deal. Yeah. One hundred bucks, you can enjoy your own daiquiris down there, my friends. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and yes, they do make them well there. Quick commercial break. We'll be back with more. Joey Zeller joining us in studio today. It is the Distance Social Drink O the Day. Daiquiri is what we're featuring. We'll talk about that menu and that recipe again when we get back. If you would like to advertise your company on the Radio Shopping Show, call our business office at area code 847-741-7700. To shop with us today, call 931-1410. Now, back to more savings and the Radio Shopping Show. And welcome back, everybody, to WRMN. This is Leah broadcasting live. We're going to get Joey on the shot here. We have got the daiquiri. And if we wanted to kind of mimic, for anybody who might be tuning in uh, and you missed the earlier part, we do have the recipe up on our YouTube page. So, of course, you can go to at WRMN radio and check it out. But we started with, you've got the rum here. And what's your rum of choice? I saw I saw it by, it was automatically a white rum, but uh, you like one and, and you guys fancy a certain product? Yeah, Probitas. Let me get your mic on there. Say it again. Probitas, okay. P-R-O-B-I-T-A-S. It's just kind of a... I don't know, inconspicuous bottle, but I like it. It's very good. I kind of dig the bottle. It's got the yeah. cork on top. Can you tell the difference if somebody is, uh, uh, usually, you remember old school days? Nowadays, you can have a good wine out of a box. Do you know what I mean? But it used to be old school that that was, if it was a screw off cork, right. it kind of helped label the yeah, level of wine, the yeah. value of the wine that you get. And nowadays, there's a lot of them that are higher in value, but still have a screw cap on it. Yeah, well, Have you notice that because um, it throws me off, man. I don't know my wines, but that well, was always my go-to. Well, wines with cork, like the pr- pretty much the only reason that they still cork wines is because it's like I don't know, it has that history or sort of like there's a maybe like a prestige to uncorking a bottle of wine. But you've heard of corked wine, right? Um, and I don't know what percentage, but a certain percentage of wine that is corked goes bad. But those twist tops, like just the perforated you know, threaded tops, those have like a hundred percent are good. Is that what they, is that what they judge it by? Yeah. Because usually now I think now that you say that Oops. if I've got something that's got a cork, but see now here you've got a rum and you're not going to be drinking this rum in one night. So no. if, if it's something, the rum is the cork's got to be designed to withhold the freshness of the booze, yeah, right? I mean, the spirits in the, in the spirits realm, it's just a matter of preference. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't like either one. There's a lot that do corks nowadays. I don't know. Some people, some of them have like a weird, I don't know, plastic thing in there. It's just a matter of preference. It depends what the spirit is. I think some of it too is a visual. Oh, I think if it looks cool, like this looks cool by having that light skinned cork on top of it with the labeling and everything. How are you selling your product? Is it right? You know, and and again, like this had whatever black shrink wrap on it, or do you like wax the top or? Right. What else do they do? Sometimes they're just like little zipper ties. You know, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. So the neat thing on here is it says that it was bottled at Four Square Rum Distillery. Is Four Square one of them that you, there's a distillery. We were talking about all those. Like, let's give a shout out to those right away. Um, on the back, I brought one of these in case you didn't have it. So we have got from a distillery. Tell me if this is a, they don't always have distillery in their name, so I don't know if it's the spirits, but those are the ones that are going to be available yeah. that day. Um, so on the distillery side, there's going to be Bardstown Bourbon Company, Chattanooga Whiskey, Dancing Goat Distillery, they're out of Wisconsin, uh, Journeyman Distillery, they're out of Michigan, 
Los Magos Sotol, and they're from Mexico, actually. Mm -hmm. New Riff Distilling, uh, Whistle Pig, um, and that is it on the distillery side. And then there's a handful of my distributors that we work with to, you know, supply the bar as well, who will be there. And the, you just mentioned the Sotol, because Sotol typically made me think of tequila. It makes yeah. me think of like going down that route. So I just looked it up here, too, which was interesting because it says it's a spirit from the Chihuahuan Desert uh, in northern Mexico and Texas. So uh, does it, when it comes to a whiskey, do you think that enhances the flavor, offering a little bit of that um, spice to it? Uh, so th in this case, you're just definitely going to get some variety. Yeah. This is not going to be like a whiskey at all, really. Yeah. It's going to be more akin to a tequila or a mezcal, but it's still kind of its own thing. Because the name says it. Like I said, when you start leaning and start talking about one of them, I was like, so told that put me right yeah, down that and they, category. I, I got to meet one of their uh, brand reps, and she was like all about it. And they have um their own like cigar brand too so you'll be able to get some samples from them some cigar samples from them and bardstown as well while i'm on the on the topic has their own cigar so bardstown bourbon company you'll probably be able to get a cigar sample from so them. from some of these and again because we said whiskey and cigars go together for so, some of these distilleries that are coming out there they're also cigar aficionados so they're going to be bringing their product yeah well uh, yeah more or okay. less. Yeah, they they have a cigar product to sell with their spirit. And one thing, too, that's going to be available at this Whiskey and Cigar Social, which I think is great fun, will, of course, be broadcasting from four to six. And I'm sure we'll um, hopefully have you and, and and or your dad coming and joining us at the table just to talk a little bit yeah, about what's we'll going on to, right now. We'll try to make time. I'm, we'll break I'm, them we'll away. We'll have to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, I can hold my own, though, now that I know enough about it. But still, we want to have somebody come sit down with us. But they're also going to be doing um, great music that night. You're also going to have food on hand that night. Yeah, so DC Cobbs, Alianos, and River Street Tavern, all local restaurants, right? Sort of our neighbors. Um, we'll have tents set up there and uh, be able to provide you with food. I'm not I, sure what their menu is yet, but they're always they're always smart good. enough to know what dis what you're going to yeah. have that night, and they will make something that For enhances sure. it. I guarantee yeah. that because they're all some great chefs over there. Um, another thing that's going to be happening, other than we talked about the Christian August Quartet, uh, the music that's going to be playing that night. Another thing is, is there's going to be a cigar roller that night to show people actually how it is that they create the cigars and roll the cigars, correct? Yep, absolutely. He'll be rolling from 4 to 7 p.m., I believe. And I don't know if I've like announced this on air yet because it's kind of unofficial, but I'll okay. have 100 uh, hand-rolled cigars at my disposal, basically. Nice. That, that basically, to get him hired, you buy X amount, and okay. then he builds those there. But they're not ready to smoke as soon as they're hand rolled. Okay, so tell me I why. I have. Um, I don't know really. So we'll exactly learn together. Why. Yeah, yeah, we'll but learn I know together. They'll, they'll roll them and they'll put them in like a like a, a cigar press to form it better. Uh -huh. And I think it just is to get everything sort of settled in there. That's what I was going to guess because it's kind of like if you want to make a, 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 a burrito or something, you want to make something and you're going to roll it up. You want it to be set. Yeah. You know, you're going to chill it. You're going to do whatever it is to make it set so it doesn't crumble apart Absolutely. by the time you start. I, I think in some it. cases it, 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 there's an aging factor. They can age it like that. But anyway, I'll have a hundred hand rolled uh -huh. fresh cigars. So the first like hundred tickets, if you want a hand rolled, you can get that as well. Wow, so get there early. What time does the um, event take place? It starts at 4, correct? So it starts, yeah, it's 4 to 9. And we don't, I've, I've, we're approaching 100 tickets, so the next, like, 30-ish people, if you'd like one, we'll have a refresh hand-rolled cigarette for you. Wonderful. Or, excuse me, cigar. And uh, the one thing that I looked up, it says it allows the cigars to settle, yeah, which is a process where they sense. normalize to the relative humidity and temperature, and that helps them settle, which makes sense. Cool. Um, the things that I rolled back in my heyday were <laughs> not a preference to <laughs> how to make a good cigar. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it's neat because it also, again, it allows it, if you let it settle a little bit prior to smoking it, you'll notice that it's going to have less burn and less ash, too. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and these ones should Kind of like be... packing a cigarette. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just a, yeah, exactly. you're not taking the motion, but There's you're letting it mold. settle in. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. but these ones will be ready to go day of. So for any cigar aficionados, effectively you could get, to my count, there's four different sticks you can get for, for the price of the ticket. Nice, yeah. nice. So come on down. Again, it's going to be at the depot. Of course, if anybody is looking at a time to enjoy a cigar, we do have those Posada Real tickets available right now. I've only got one remaining. 
So there's only one left. So if you want to get on down, we were talking during that last break about our visits to uh, San Juan del or Jose. San Jose del Cabo, um, we both were down there kind of right on the water. The water too by us was actually too rough. The current was too rough, so um, you couldn't go into uh, the water, but we had a pool and a swim up bar and things like that. Yeah, as that part you're of the accommodated facility. even if you can't go to the beach right. in any of those places. But when you were talking about, and I told you about those tacos, I, they were called a Baja taco because obviously taco. you're in the Baja Peninsula, yeah. right? So it was a Baja taco that had a lot of that smoky grill kick to it. Yum. And if you had that and then somebody served you up a nice daiquiri, because yeah. down there when you're on the beach, you've got these umbrellas and you've got these uh, chaise lawn chairs. And by having that, and they deliver it right to you. Absolutely. So they yeah. give you some of those Baja tacos and a nice daiquiri. That would be dreamy. Yeah. That I could just sit out in the sun and be there for a long while. It would be yeah, delicious. When we were down there is uh, Micheletas okay, and yep. uh, ceviche. Yeah, just ceviche like, was em, phenomenal. Yeah. Where did we go? We were out somewhere and ordered ceviche. Oh, we went out to Sammy's. Um, I was meeting with a friend, Greg, from Anderson Humane, and, and we had a meeting, and so we went out there. We had a bowl like about this big, and you could choose whether you wanted octopus in it or yeah, uh, whitefish in it or if you wanted shrimp in it. So good. And it was, and he had never had ceviche before, too. So we were saying how so great good it was. And fresh there. See, yeah. now I can see, too, the lime ceviche blending the two a, of those and together. A daiquiri. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. We are here with Joey Zeller. If you want to get in and get on, get down to San Jose del Cabo, just like we did, we have got that uh, Posada Real ticket right now. I've got one left. And that is good for two people to travel four days and three nights down to San Jose del Cabo, Posada Real. You can actually sign up while you're at the hotel if you want to do any excursions if you want to swim with the dolphins if you want to go on the camel rides if you want to go on the electric bikes or the sunset sails you can set it up all when you check into your hotel this includes your food and your drink and we've been talking about different ideas that you would put forward that would be complementary to a daiquiri probably 90 percent of the menu when you're down in mexico would be great with the daiquiri yeah i mean like i said anything that a margarita would go go well with you could make a daiquiri go with and actually it's almost uh i don't want to say it's lighter it's just a different makeup like a margarita having the tequila in there having the rum in this it makes it um i don't know it makes it a sm it's not a smoother um because it both has the lime different i mean i would describe this rum and so some other white rums as like crispy sort of you get like a nice crispy fresh daiquiri I think that's the exact yeah. word for it. Yeah, that's talent behind there. That's why he's that's why he's in that seat, and I'm just here talking on the radio. Um, but you're right; it's got a it's got a um, a lightness to it, or a little bit of a kick to it. Whereas a margarita, usually, if you're going to be doing a margarita, I'm tasting more of the stuff that's around it than I am the actual yeah. tequila. And, and other than the rum tequila, the only other difference is the margarita will have like a triple sec right. or a Grand Marnier or something like a little bit of orange in there. But other than that, it's the same. And it's Cocktail. meant to be refreshing because it's served yeah. up with some spicy kicks, you yes, know, some spicy absolutely. food out there. We're going to take our final commercial break. I want to remind you, you're listening to WRMN. If you want to get on down to Posada Riel, all you need to do is dial me up at 847 9311410. And I tell you what, if anybody has been down there to the Posada Real and have you yourself enjoyed either a daiquiri or we've had margaritas here, but if you'd enjoyed a daiquiri or any one of the drinks that we've been featuring here on our drink of the day. And again, if we run them down, we have the daiquiri. And I'm going to try and go backwards. We did the daiquiri. We did the Gordon's Cup. Before that was uh, New York the West, Sour. New York Sour. Right. And then before that, was Uncle Gare with the Go going West. Out West. Yeah. Going out West. And then before that, we had... Cosmopolitan. Cosmopolitan. Mm -hmm. And then was it Manhattan, Manhattan. before that? Yep. Uh, and then before that, I think we had the champagne. It was French 75. French 75. And champagne cocktail. Yep. And then Old Fashioned was our first. So if yeah. any of those you have had and you got a picture of it, be free, feel free to send it to us. We'll pop it up on our page. We'll get you a little gift just for participating in our Drink of the Day fun. The number here again is 847-931-1410. If you want to get your tickets right now directly from the Distance Social, I'm going to recommend that you go stop at their bar. It's at, and again, three. 14. 314. 314. 
314 yes, North River Street. And again, mark your calendars for April 25th from 4 until 9. We'll be broadcasting live there from 4 until 6. And then you can listen to great music. You can watch the cigar rolling. You can get a certificate or a cigar that's coming to you right away just with your ticket includes one of the cigars. Absolutely. And we'll be out there that night again broadcasting live. Come join the fun. It's the Whiskey and Cigar Social brought to you by The Distance Social. We'll be back with uh, more and finishing up the show after these messages. This is Leah and Joey co-hosting on our Every Other Week Thursday. You're just going to have to do it forever now, so you might as well just mark your calendar. That's okay. All I'll right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more after these messages. Welcome back, everybody, to WRMN. I was just telling, and Miss Deborah called before, and she was mentioning her Long Island iced tea, which I can understand is a nice, relaxing um, kickback after work, which is a good beverage. It's got multiple, so she's kind of got everything that we've talked about is almost in a Long Island yeah, iced tea. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and so I was telling Joey that I remember... I think it was called the Main Exchange. It was this place in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And I met a girl who was, we were best friends, grade school and high school. I met her and we decided to have a Long Island iced tea. And when we were sitting there, of course, they come back from the table and they had two of them sitting on the tray. And, you know, they come in a long skinny glass. Yeah. So that's one you talk about a stir stick. That's when you want to keep it flowing around because the alcohol will always settle on the bottom, you know? So you want to stir it up. Well, they put two then down in front of me and I didn't realize on the other side of the tray, there was two more of them for her. And we're like, what's this? And he goes, it's double bubble. (laughs) And oh yeah, that was the last time I ended up. First of all, I learned about double bubble. I knew what it was. I just didn't know it was a new bar and some, not everybody does a double bubble kind of thing or a happy hour, right? Uh, Yeah. I learned my lesson on that one. You guys, we were talking a, a little bit about what days you're open, and we, we mentioned the hours because you do offer and provide a way for people to get their tickets. But also, we mentioned it during that, uh, probably our second segment here. I was saying that there's times where, and especially on a date night, like you guys, I, I would consider, my husband and I work different areas, and sometimes when you're at home, you're still dealing with home life and bills. Yeah. And, and I consider that a great date night out place, the distance social. Do you find a lot of that? That there yeah for sure mm-hmm. for sure um a lot of date nights a lot of like uh, family outings or like we're going out for yeah. birthday drinks or anniversary drinks and mm-hmm. stuff like that i can see too just from a business uh concept i i i met somebody the other day she was with the oh Christ, sue i think her name is sue sue or sandy i'm sorry i can't remember right now but i had met her and um, I can see she and I are both marketing people. Okay, yeah. And I can see going out there and just having a drink with somebody that you're you're bouncing ideas off of. Yeah, I'm, yeah, exactly. I mean, we do get a lot of that too, like uh-huh. the sort of business people, you know, coming in to again spitball ideas or whatever right. over a drink. Or um, I get some local business people who's like, it's going to be a long day, so they take a break, you know, around four or five, come in, have a cocktail, and then go you know, hit the grindstone again. Exactly. See, that I can see would be a great one. And their hours are conducive with that, which is kind of nice. The start of the week is is more often than not usually closed, especially with a lot of the restaurants and things in the area. Be- just because for those of you who aren't in the business, you realize that the weekend is the prime time. Yeah. And so you're putting in long hours on the weekend. You have to have just for a little bit of a relief, a break on uh, Monday or Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. our, that's our weekend. Mm-hmm. Luck- luckily, I get Sunday off too, which is... Lovely. Did you um, did you get involved with uh, March Madness at all? No. I, I before the final game, I googled who was in the final. That you didn't was, know it was in the no, final. That was about so the extent. We did we did the brackets with our kids. Yeah. And uh, um, I ended up losing by one point, so my husband got it. But we're very competitive. So Close. the next thing he did is my son called me or sent me a text today, a group text saying, "Hey, let's do the Masters because the Masters tournament is on this weekend." And he said, let's do the Masters. And I said, all right, who paid you to determine that now I had to watch golf all weekend because you're invested in the game, right? Um, But the fun thing I can see, though, is watching some of those. Like, I can see going out and having a nice uh, uh, drink, one of them either that we've made here, and watching it. Do you have TVs there that if somebody wants to watch an event or there's something like the mass, like to me, a whiskey, a nice whiskey yeah. drink would be good to watch during the Masters event. Yeah. So, I mean, part of our gimmick, I suppose, maybe for lack of a better phrase, is that we don't really have TVs at the bar mm-hmm. and it's a good place to come and like chat and meet people and socialize. But we do have a TV. So upstairs, we call it the library. And it's, if you haven't been there, um, the second floor is really nice and this area in particular is very, it feels very much like your family room, I yeah. suppose, but like 
if your family room was a cocktail lounge. Mm -hmm. So there's a TV there and we get people frequently, not as often as I'd like, I guess, but who will come and watch a game and, you know, have some drinks. So I've had some people come and they literally like pack a picnic. Like they'll, I think it was for the Super Bowl. They like cooked like a, like a, like Did they really like that much? And brought like a whole spread, and it was and it was only them there. So when somebody's doing that, do they end up reserving the room for that purpose, or do is because it can't just be like you're, yeah. that's banking a lot if yeah, you think you're just going to get it as a luck of the draw. Um, so it is available for private reservation if you wanted to reserve it for either a larger group or to see the game, but the, like these people just found the space. So, like Super Bowl Sunday, people aren't really out. Right. So more people these, are at so home watching and having just, their it party. It was a slow day for us, and they came and watched the game here. But like really, anything, any sporting event that's going on, come and watch it. My disclaimer, though, is I'm not. I can't guarantee that I'm going to have the channel it's on. But you're more than welcome to try. That's or, the worst thing when it comes to a bar is when you yeah. got people arguing about what channel be on. That's why it's smart not to have that in the main room because you're right. It's uh, this is meant to be a socializing event, yeah, you know, and having people talk. And that's why music isn't blaring yeah. and blasting. I don't even think we had the channel that they were playing March Madness on. Oh, really? Yeah, because that's not they don't put that on. a Well, whatever. Some people came in and couldn't find it or found that we didn't pay it might for be that yeah it might be the exact game yeah it might um, be the exact game they had it on cbs yeah, the but, basic network but, but yeah. that was the only group of people who've not been able to find to to figure out how to get it to do what they need pretty much and so yeah. i can see if there's going to be events like that usually around father's day there's um different especially in the season there for golfing events i mean now we're getting into the golfing yeah. season and for anybody out there i can understand too how after you know they always called it in golf they call it the um, you know, the 10th hole or what is it? So you've got nine holes of yeah, golf, the, right? The, the 19th hole. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Cause you got 18 greens and it's the 19th green. Yeah. Yep. So you go into the bar to finish it off. But folks, if you want to be a part of uh, that and you want to head on out to a distant social, certainly give us a call 847-931-1410. They are going to be hosting the whiskey and cigar social. I'm going to put this up once again. And if you want to, if anything, I always look at this as an educational opportunity. I know that sounds funny, but you know, just like tonight, we said, why do whiskey and cigars go together? Yeah. And you'll be able to find out firsthand on your own. Get a friend, come on down. We're going to be there broadcasting live from four until six. And remember, uh, if you want to check it out, if you want to learn a little bit more, we've got some of these brochures in our Redemption Center. So if you want to learn about the distillers, distilleries, as well as um, some of your partners on here that are going to be out there, they can check that out. The cards are right on the wall. That's right. We also have a Facebook event page, I think, if you look it up, um, and then Eventbrite as well, if you want to order tickets from there. And I will say those are still going to be cheaper than Day Of. So Day Of is going to be a couple bucks more. Yeah, I think it's even... about 75 if you go to Eventbrite. Bright. Yeah, It'll be 80 like day of, 80. and then you can get them by you at 65, 65. so you can get them direct, yep. um, which is really smart because not only does it get people into the bar, but then if they've got any questions, um, they can ask those at the same time. Yeah, you know, they can come absolutely. on down and see you. And this is the first one. So it's the inaugural event. And I will say, and I know you've mentioned it too, that a lot of people have been asking about it. I know um, the uh, Anvil Club had done one uh, quite a few years back, and that was the last one I had heard of. Yeah. You don't see these that often, but no. there's certainly a lot of people that will enjoy it. Yeah, people are excited to have this sort of event back in town. So I hope we can pull it off and you know either way if we don't do it this year then there's always next year because our first time i have no idea what to expect so. and that happens with any first yeah. time event you're either good I, well first of all you're going to be satisfied because we know how many people at least start coming yeah but the other thing is is it might just be over the top that you're thinking okay we got to add a little bit more to it because i didn't realize yes. there was going to be that kind of response right. like what do we do right what we what we do wrong yeah i don't know it's one it'll, of the things you sit and analyze if anybody's ever planned an event like this you always have that follow-up meeting where you sit and kind of analyze and break everything yeah. down. What worked well? What might we challenge? What can make it even better? But first of all, we need to get there. So make sure you come on out. Mark your calendars, April 25th. I'm excited about it. My husband's going to be coming awesome. down. Uh, Gary, I think, yeah, is going Gary to be, be there. there. Obviously, our owners are going to be on down there, so they're going to enjoy a nice cool. cigar. And folks, if you want to be a part of it, just give a call over to the Distant Social. Let's throw a phone number out. We don't do that enough. If somebody has a question, where can they yeah, reach you? I think... I'm 224-484-8858, and I did ask that. I'm not actually sure if that's right. I did ask that. Is that what you just yeah. said? So 224-484-8858. Oh, uh, got it. 
Is that right? Yeah. Nice. Sweet. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> it's a win. The daiquiri helped. All right. Thank you so much, Joy, for joining us again. Wishing you continued success out there. We'll be in touch awesome. uh, before our next event. Two weeks from tonight, we're going to be live. You can join us over at the depot. Again, it's uh, Distant Social. Thank you so much for joining us. Yep. Thanks for having me. We're going to have a great night. Have a good one, everybody. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And remember, in a world where you can choose to be anything, choose to be kind, my friends. Have a good one.